What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Survivor Now podcast. My name is Randy, and today, unfortunately, I am joined. Unfortunately, because you got eliminated. I just want to put it out there. You get what I mean. I, fortunately, I am joined by Rihanna, the 18th castaway eliminated from Survivor Australia Titans versus Rebels and the fifth member of the jury. Yeah, I immediately said it like that, and I was like, wait a second. This sounds terrible. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm happy. I've been in Drew Villa, so I'm like, I'm fed, I'm slept on a mattress, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Well, it was unfortunate to see what went down last night, Re. Uh, sorry, I, I, I kind of mixed up whether to call you Riri or Rihanna, so. Um, it, it... It's personal preference, but I think Riri is easier, Um, so yeah, whatever. Riri, you want. Oh, okay, awesome. Well, yeah, it was either way. I was going to say that I actually, I'm going to bring this back up. I spelled your name right because that was a funny thing last night. <laughs> Seeing Mark spell it with the one in. That was... I don't know how many spelling errors we've had like throughout this season. And I'm also like, oh, come on, guys, the spelling. You really didn't know how to spell my name. But yeah, it's, it's got to be cool. super frustrating. It's tough, though. You don't have it like in writing a lot of the times on the show. <laughs> well, now that we're actually getting into the thick of things, into the game, Rihanna, how did you enjoy watching the episode last night? Uh, who'd you watch it with? How did you partake in the uh, evening? Yeah, watching it back was. Um, I think most of it I knew was going to happen, um, and then uh, I knew it was. I knew it was my time to go. So uh, not, not too many surprises for me last night. Overall, um, watching the season back, did you enjoy the edit that you got? Because I feel like you played a really good game. Like three um, immunity challenges. We're going to get to that. We're going to talk about how you're an immunity challenge machine. But and you had a social game. So how did you enjoy watching the whole season play back? Yeah, like, I loved watching it back. I thought it was so great. Like, obviously, they miss out all the little things you have at camp and all the other small relationships you have. And, like, it's a big Kirby Ferris kind of version this year. But so they obviously, like, don't see a lot of the conversations that Kirby and I have and a bit more influence I have. But I love seeing um, still how I fit into this season and still, like, I make it through, like, a terrible tribe swap to come back to merge and then end up being um, the challenge beast. So um, I'm loving it. It's been great. Well, that was that was such a big thing with you this season, especially in the post-merge era, seeing how well you did at those challenges and just thinking in the back of our minds, okay, when Rihanna loses, is her name going to be on the chopping block? When you yeah. were out there, was that in the back of your mind? If I lose these challenges... Uh, my name's immediately going to go up, especially after you won your second and then you won your third. So how much did you know if I don't have that necklace around my neck, I could be in trouble? Well, it's funny because I feel like watching this back every night, people were saying my name, like Rihanna tonight, Rihanna now. Like I'm like, oh, there's a lot of people that really just didn't want me in this game. Um, and then uh, obviously I don't really think about it during the challenge. Like I don't think like, oh, I really need to win this. I think I go to a bit of a different mental zone like a bit more calming than trying to stress myself out but um the last challenge that we just had in Kirby obviously won I obviously knew straight I was like oh we're in a bit of trouble here with that one like I was like I'm, I don't have any enough allies and people to build relationships with in the sense that I knew everyone just didn't want to go to the end with me because I knew any challenge moving forward they were all up like they just had no hope in winning so um yeah I, I couldn't swing them any other way so um yeah my time had come <laughs> during the challenge there was no like look over to kirby and like hey curbs how would you just throw this <laughs> challenge there was none of that during the challenge you guys had to like exchange some looks so i was definitely like you can hear obviously like kirby's going well she's about to knock it and there's me being like oh but to be honest i was out of anyone that could win i was really happy out of me and kirby i didn't really care about anyone else but i was looking over almost to check out to make sure she was going okay because if I couldn't win it, she needed to win it. So one of us had to like keep keep going. So um, yeah, I was really actually really happy she won. She is an absolute beast. That woman. She her how her brain works. It's very very impressive. Well, I was gonna say before we get into like the tribal council that we saw t take place last night, let's get into that relationship that you had with Kirby this season. You said Kirby and Ferris obviously was like the marquee thing this season of you know these two going at it almost having like a frenemy bond in a way, but you were right there in the thick of things. Ferris had his people, you know, whether it was Garrick at the time, Eileen 
or it was Raymond, it really seemed like you and Kirby all season long were, were just like this. So can you describe to us the relationship that you had with Kirby? Like, how did that get started on the island? How soon did you guys connect? And how close were you in the game? This is so interesting, but we actually had um, our alliance build on day one, which I don't know if this has ever happened in Survivor and how strong this was. Like, And it was like so organic too. So I remember first day you go to camp, you build your shelter, you have some like little fake conversations about you want to be in alliance or whatever. And me and Kirby would always kind of like look at each other like, mm, not sure how we feel about some of these. That night we end up having a talk on um, the beach and she said, like, let's come have a chat. And then I was like, are you from the country? And she's like, yeah, you? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, I just got this feeling you were. And like, you're such a down to earth, like such a cool, like, like chick. And then, so we kind of went like, yeah, we should, we should work as an alliance. And I honestly, at that time we said, let's take each other to the end. This is from day one. Let's take each other to the end. And then we kind of just like pick everyone else off around us. That was like kind of essentially the conversation. And from then I never looked back on our trust. I never broke our loyalty and, it, it just never, I never even thought about it. So, um, and then it just flourished as we went on. The only problem is that I became her right-hand man and then no one likes the right-hand man to someone who's very powerful. And Especially then- <laughs> this season. I, the right-hand men have been getting caught off left and right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this season. And then, yeah, so then everyone tries to vote me out. But I got to number seven. So with all that in mind, I am here and... Um, some people don't even probably recognize it because like I went to tribe swap, I had to fight through there and then coming back and there was always a target there. And I had to always like shift that off me or like try and get away from that. And my time you're, was up last night. <laughs> you already answered one of my next questions. I was immediately going to say, was there ever a moment in your mind that you're like, okay, I need to get Kirby out of the way, out of the game. And you said that your loyalty never wavered. How many opportunities did you have? How many people were coming to you constantly and saying, Riri, go with us. Leave Kirby in the dust. How often yeah. was that coming up? Yeah, it's actually very funny because um, earlier on, uh, I obviously saw our relationship like being noticed by other people and everyone's like, they're tight, they're tight. And I said to Kirby, I was like, can we for, like pretend to fight and like be mad at each other so I can get a bit more like street cred over here being like, oh yeah, like they're not so like tight. And it was like funny joke running that we just like have this big brawl about nothing and then like pretend like we're enemies. But lots of people did. Like Alex would have loved me to work with him and get Kirby out. Like so many people would have loved that to happen. But they just then knew, they knew it. They knew that I was not going to like go against the loyalty with her. And then after that, it was, whether it was a bad move for people to know it or not, but then that is like, there's no hope of even really trying. Like even Alex taking us to the spa, love him to bits for doing that, by the way. Um, <laughs> I really needed that lasagna. That lasagna saved me. <laughs> but literally trying to crack us. Like it was just probably too far. You, you you just couldn't do it. So I really wish I saw that brawl go down because that fake brawl, because then we would have like a nomination situation of who had the best acting this season. Was oh, it yeah. Raymond with the tribe or was it Rihanna and Kirby in their big <laughs> blow up? How close were you to actually staging this? I was keen. I was definitely keen. <laughs> Kirby just kept laughing at me like, you're silly. But I was like, Kirby, I reckon it'll work. Like, let's just do it. Like, I'm pretty sure my acting skills are great. I'm not sure about Kirby, but like, I could. I reckon I could have done it. Yeah. No, I would I would have loved to see that. Man, that missed opportunity. But we saw the relationship and hearing it here, it's obvious that you and Kirby were very close. I assume still close outside the game. Yeah, yeah. she <laughs> rang me this morning. Like we talk every day. So yeah, she rang me this morning checking uh, in. Yeah. That's a, that's amazing. So something we don't get to see is who else were you close with out on the island besides Kirby being your number one? Because I was thinking about this earlier. I, I was wondering if maybe you and Scott had a relationship and maybe that kind of went out because we saw Scott working closely with you two as well. Maybe that when he left the game, that kind of switched things up. So who were you also very close with out on the island? Yeah, so pretty much from the first Rebel um, side, Scotty and Kirby were my absolute, um, my my faves. And uh, Scotty knows this pretty much like from the first few days. I don't even know who couldn't like Scotty. He's like the nicest human I've He's ever He's so been. sweet. So sweet. Like literally like, oh, bless his cotton socks. Um, so when he left, I was like, so happy he was doing something for him but then I was so sad because he was a very important part of like our alliance and like moving forward but so happy that he is like in a better place but 
Kitty was another one who doesn't really get show. That girl, um, she's the funniest woman, like can literally talk, I don't know, talk your arm off. But she also is just so like gets down to a deep and personal level with you, which makes you want to trust her. You don't see it on the show. You just see her like going around. But she actually is really good at that. And me and Jaden obviously make all the fires together. I'm obviously much better at it than him. But um, <laughs> Jaden, Jaden, are you watching? <laughs> I'm putting that on Instagram, Rhea. You can't get that. Oh, it was so funny when we came to Tribe Swap. And then obviously I was the fire maker. I was the fire queen for the Rebels. And he's come over as a Titan. And he started making this fire. And I'm a bit like trying to act cool because I'm like, I don't want to, like, I don't know what he's doing. And then I was like, I start making it the way I was doing it. And I remember he said he looked over being like, what's she doing down there? Like making the, like how she makes the fire. But then we came together and then we made a big epic fire and we became like, Fire king queen. <laughs> are you are you listening, Survivor Australia? I need a fire making challenge right now. Rihanna versus Jaden. Please get yes. that on a future season. Yep. <laughs> but, well, let's let's talk about the other type of challenge. Not only building fires, but we can now talk about the immunity challenges. You won. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three immunity challenges this season, yes. which is absolutely insane. So for myself, for maybe some future Australian Survivor players. What's your secret? What made you so good at these challenges, whether it's hanging upside down for hours, going head to head with Alex? Like why, what made you so good at these challenges? I kind of want to say it's stubbornness because I didn't want to lose against Alex, but um, <laughs> um, I actually maybe think like maybe my whole life has maybe brought me to this point. Like it's just my, I don't know. I do every, I don't do things by halves and I really like to push myself in like anything I always do. So I think I just had maybe like a built up endurance, but I actually had no idea I could do it because when am I ever going to go hang on a rope for seven hours or whatever? I don't go do that on my days off. So um, literally when I got put to these challenges, I was just like, this is, this is great. Like I'm actually like doing really well in them all. So um, I was really happy about that. Obviously like I had, um, a few times with Eileen on that rope, that one was like so hard and like hats off to her for getting that because they don't even show half of it, like how much we're literally out there and it's so hot and like literally we're hanging off these like tiny ropes. Like at the oh. very end, when I fall off, it's pretty much just blood coming from my hand and like I slide down with blood and like my hands are all just like cut up. So it, yeah, it was, it was so gross and it was like fleshy. It wasn't even like, I was like, oh, I pushed myself a little bit far on that one. So what um, was the toughest challenge? Cause I mean, Australian survivor is like known for super tough challenges. So what was like the toughest one? Um, I, I do think that the one I did with Alex, where we hang on that piece of wood and then hang on the rope, like half in the water. Um, that one to me was like quite mentally challenging. And I remember at one point I, um, Jaden was standing next to me and I was like, I don't, I don't think I've got it in me anymore. And I remember him saying to me, you don't give up until you've got nothing left. <laughs> and then I was like, I got something left. <laughs> so I was like mentally being like, just keep holding on. Like, do not let go of that rope. And then, um, and then I didn't, and then uh, ended up winning that one. So it was really good, but it did literally put me to like the point where I was like, this is like, everything's hurting where my ankles were like, they were pinched against a um, piece of metal. So like, I ended up having like really oh. dented it. Like, yeah, like pressurey sores on my ankles and then behind my knees. Like, um, yeah, it's – and Alex can contest to this. Like, it was just painful in every bit of your body. It's like, everything hurts. It had to at least feel good, though. Like, while a challenge is going on, you continuously hear JLP in the background. Like, Rihanna again, you know, <laughs> not moving an inch. Like, I don't know if that added some pressure to you or if that's like, yeah, JLP, yeah, I'm not moving. Yeah, and I was really lucky this whole season. For some reason, I used to like I just got placed next to JLP for most of my challenges. So like it would be like me and then him right right here, and he'd always be like, "You're looking good, Ree," and I'm like, "Emma, thanks, thanks, <laughs> JLP. You're looking good too." <laughs> and I was like, I would always be like having a joke with him, but um, yeah, he's like, "You're looking solid. You're looking solid." Um, and it was such a nice, yeah, it was really nice that he always said that nice thing. He's like, "Not surprised that Ree's here. Like back again." The um, things you do to pass an hour, like just hanging on a rope, like the casual, like we need more of that. We need I, those top oh, you should, just the conversations that we have are actually so funny, and especially between me and Alex, who are just like giving, like giving it to each other or something like that. And when Alex was on the pegs and he fell backwards, 
it took him a little while to get back up. So I'm just like, what are you doing down there? Like, what's happening? <laughs> like, and then he's like, Reed, really, come down and join me. It's nice down here. I was like, there's no way in hell, Alex, that I'm doing what you're doing right now because that is just going to end me. Like, I'm not ever getting back up like you can. Like, but I yeah, don't know so. how that you don't lose concentration. I would immediately, I would say something, start talking a little smack, immediately, <laughs> immediately lose concentration and fall. I already know it. Um, <laughs> And then talking about the, we do have to talk about the tribal council that took place last night where you got sent to the jury bench. And this was a really interesting one. We saw a couple plans going down. Obviously your name was being thrown out. Mark's name was being thrown out. So I'm interested to hear how confident you were heading to tribal council. And then there was a moment at tribal council where you lean over to Kirby and you say, I think we're in the clear. What gave you that indication to believe that you guys were going to be okay? Um, it's very interesting actually, because I don't have, I didn't have one inkling, um, to think I was okay. I actually thought I was going home <laughs> the whole time, which is very funny. Like when I watched that edit back, but, um, cause when we obviously pitched the four girls against like going into the four boys and, um, like we needed Caroline. And I, I remember the, the moment that we were on the beach and I knew a hundred percent Caroline lied to my face. And like me and Kirby, obviously like when Caroline speaks a bit higher and she was like, no, I'm voting for Mark. Oh, she's talking oh. like this. Yeah. And then we went to Kirby and I was like, she just lied straight to my face. Um, and then obviously the bit with Kitty, who actually told me to my face, and she was like, I'm voting for you, right? Oh, I mean, Mark, like, what, whatever. like. Every, and then I'm just like, okay, well, that's two of them that I'm getting weird little spidey senses that they're obviously less like lying to me, um, which is like part of the game. It's all good. Um, but then me and Kirby were like, like, what else do we have? Like, we don't even have many options here to, like, weasel our way out of this. So, and then we got to um, Tribal Council. I can't even remember why I said I think we're in the clear um, at all, actually. But I, I knew I was going. So, must have said something about, yeah, I knew they weren't voting for Mark. So, well, we do. You still have a say in this game. We're going to see your journey play out on the on the jury bench now. I am curious to hear. We we already talked about how you worked with Kirby most of the game. And a lot of the talk surrounding this episode was resumes, you know, building resumes. We get JLP's line at the end about resumes. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to hear if you and Kirby go to the end together, which sounds like that was the plan for you two to be there. How do you differ? differentiate your game from Kirby's and what was that what do you consider your biggest move of the game this is really a hard one because obviously like people's perceptions of big moves or even moves in themselves definitely yeah. varies and every fan def definitely thinks of it differently but obviously Kirby and I made a lot of decisions from the start like together but obviously where it comes down to it's like obviously I have my stuff on the after tribe swap and like the new rebels tribe. That's anything that happened there was mine. Whether it, it didn't even go to plan, but I was still there. It's still like yep. someone else has gone home. Um and then it's probably I would have to pitch probably the challenge thing with me because technically a lot of the other stuff that Kirby has done, um, either with other stuff, like it's mostly herself or with Ferris um, towards the end as well. Like obviously I'm there and I'm a vote, but like she obviously is the brains behind all that. So pretty much just selling like how I've pretty much dodged a bullet since day one and everyone trying to vote me out since day one. Like Kirby hasn't really, to be honest, no one tries to vote for her. Like, which No, you're is, not wrong about that, no. Which is great play by her. But when you're on the bottom and you're having to fight each day, like that's fighting. I'm fighting every day to show you that I'm still here. So I actually had to fight my way to the end. And Kirby was just better at being not being voted for, but got to the end. Yeah. I think, Rihanna, I think you should be proud of the way that you played because, uh, like I said, the social ability was there. I think it's it says something getting into a tight alliance like that and being able to use that alliance throughout the game. You added the three immunity wins. I think it was a really impressive game. And I have to ask, um, as our time runs out here, unfortunately, uh, what will you take away from this experience as a whole? And Will if they if they ask you, will you go back out and play again? Because you need more immunity necklaces around your neck. And that's probably where you've answered it for me. Like, what am I taking out of this challenge? Like, out of this whole season is like, how far can I push this? Like, how far can I go in these challenges? And how far? Like, what challenge can they design that I can kind of push myself further than someone else? Like, we have a lot of strong women in past seasons, but what other of those ones can like? I felt actually really calm and easy through some of these challenges. So like, it's almost like 
some of the other contestants have looked like they're in pain and stuff. So it's like maybe do you need to bring back a challenge beast to um, for another season to see what she can do? And imagine if this challenge beast learns how to be strategic, like and actually get her finesse like down on the voting. Like that could be a very a big force to be reckoned with, to be honest. So you go back out there? If they called right now, you would say yes. Yeah, yeah, I loved it out there. I have no regrets, like, whatsoever. I loved it. Um, I think it's the best challenge, and I reckon, yeah, anyone that's actually seen the applications out now, apply. It's actually – Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect timing. Go apply right now. Well, Rihanna, thank you so much for joining us today, and I can't wait to see exactly how your journey ends with – uh, you being on the jury now. So thank you so much for joining no us. No worries. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you.